Just fine. Eric, how are you? I am doing very well. I am sitting here in Appleton, Wisconsin, inside the Anderson Pens brick and mortar pen shop, uh, surrounded by pens. But I'll give you a few minutes of my attention, and then I'll go back to the pens. Where, where are you sitting, sir? At home? Uh, where I, I'm, I'm home? sitting at, yeah, at home in, uh, in Centennial, Colorado, which is a suburb of uh, Denver. Uh, Denver. I've well, heard of Denver. I'm sitting here in Appleton, Wisconsin, inside the Canderson. Somebody has, uh, oh, it started playing. Remember you clicked play earlier to see what would happen? And it told you it would start soon? Where are you sitting, sir? How am I going to? At home. Just click the pause there. button. How's on that? The, there. That's better. Good. <laughs> Sorry about that. Too many computers. Um, um, you said you're in a suburb of Denver, and Denver is where the Colorado Pen Show will be taking place next month. You are a sponsor of the Colorado Pen Show. Is that correct? Indeed. This will be the second year I'm a sponsor. Well, that's interesting because this is also the second year of the pen show itself, isn't it? That's right. So the first one was was such a success that we decided to try again. Well, uh, Ed Capizzi will tell you that that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I, I would agree with him. It was the first year last year, and uh, it was a good acquaintance period for the Denver folks that are interested in that kind of thing to the show. So hopefully, we'll get some more interest because that should spawn some more. You hope. I think. We'll get. I don't. I wasn't there last year, uh, but I spoke to Ed um, a couple of days ago, and he said there was only one table left uh, for exhibitors. So it, it must have. It must be meeting his goals as far as filling the place up. So that's good. It's always hard to get a new show off the ground. It sounds like in the yeah. second year we're already off the ground, especially think, yeah. especially because you'll be there. What are your responsibilities as a pen sponsor? I have none other than to uh, pay Ed more money than anybody else. All right, so you, you, you provide financial support, but they don't give you like uh, any sort of crown or something important. I, I, I get no crown. My table is the same size as everybody else, uh, I, but I do get to pick my own table. Oh, you got to pick your own table. But that's yeah, important. Right, right. Some yeah. of the tables are better than others. Uh, yeah, I think so. So I think I picked a good one. All right. Plus and you get yeah, And the other, the other sponsor, Ryan, I think will pick a good one too. So. I, you know, I didn't talk about where his table is going to be. I don't know if he has one or two because he's bringing his entire entourage, he mentioned. Yeah, yeah. He'll, have, uh, he'll have at least two, I'm sure. And um, the name of your company is Argent Blue. That's right. And what does that mean? Yeah. I understand the blue part. Oh, well, the Argent means silver. Okay. Blue silver or silver blue? Well, Argent Blue would be silver blue. Okay. So. <laughs> And, and, of course, you're going to ask where I came up with that. And it just kind of came out of the air. And, uh, you know, I like working with silver, so I tried to think of something that would allude to that. And Argent does that. And I like the color blue. And that might be said, as if you look at my website, it says uh, that the blue comes from the really pretty peacock blue that I get out of uh, heat coloring Damascus steel. Damascus steel. Uh, the first pens you made, were they silver? They were Damascus steel. You made the first pens for Damascus steel, and right. they're all gone now? Uh, no, the two I made, I still have. They were both just uh, just one-offs to see if I could do it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and the answer was, yeah, I could do it, and I still have them. There, there, there are a couple of pictures of those on the website, and they're both uh, Parker dual-fold, uh, you know, late 80s replicas, but they're, uh, one of them is the dual-fold international, that was the first one I made, and the second one was the Centennial size. It had nothing to do with the city of Centennial. Just the, <laughs> just the name of the, the Parker pen style. And I made them both out of the same kind of Damascus steel. Uh, I wanted to make something really pretty, and it uh, worked out pretty well. Uh, there's three, one of the reasons I don't sell them is because they were the, the first ones I ever made, and that's kind of historical for me. And the other thing is they're prototypes. So, you know, they're, they're the first shot. And right, something like that, and there's some addition, there's some problems with making things out of heavy metals like steel, and uh, and there's some of the little things that I had to work around. So uh, they're, they're prototypes, and I'd rather not sell them because they have a little little um, little tiny flaws in them that I, that I know about. I mean, a buyer might not know about them, but I know about them, so I just keep them out of circulation. So you made those first two out of Damascus steel, right? 
to prove to yourself that you could make pens. And since then, you've been doing them with silver. Uh, that, that's correct. The, uh, the history behind the silver ones is I was introduced to a, a couple of uh, Andy Lambrose uh, pens back in the year 2000. And the ones that I saw were what were called the CP5, which were indeed the, uh, the Parker dual fold. Uh, I just call them replicas that he makes, and he had permission to, to do all those things from the different manufacturers, Pelican, Parker, Aurora, etc. So these were solid silver with guilloche on them, and uh, uh, my friend showed me those things, and I said, those are just beautiful. Um, since my, my hobby is metalwork rather than woodwork, uh, I've been playing with you know, metal machinery and big machining for all of my, all of my hobbyist life. And I said, you know, I can I can make those things. So it took a few years to get all of some of the specific equipment to do the the engraving, but uh, finally got all that stuff and started making them. And uh, so now I make these guilloched silver silver pens. Uh, most of them are in the uh, the slipstream category. Let me find if I let me see if I can find a picture. I know you can find a picture because you did this beforehand. <laughs> Let me see if I can make it work now. Okay. <laughs> this this is uh, one of the slipstreams, is it not? Uh, yes. Let me hang on. Let me click on that so I can see what you're showing. It's a pen. Yeah, I figured. And yes, I, that, I found yeah, it. That, actually, I, actually, you had a, a better picture before that. That one. That one is a slipstream. That one has what's called a basket weave pattern on it. Right, you have different patterns. Let me find another one. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure I'm getting a slipstream. What is this one? If it's silver, it's a slipstream. Yep, that's upside down, but that's good. Actually, I had to turn it because it wouldn't fit on your website. It's it's taller than longer. Um, ah. But this way, it is all on the screen. This is yeah. also a slipstream, oh. yes. and it's not a basket weave. That is not a basket weave. That's just some custom pattern that I uh, dreamed up myself. And, and how do you put that pattern on a pen? I With a little chisel? You got a little chisel and a little hammer and you, uh, maybe a microscope? No, I use what's called a straight line machine. And for those that know about those things, that's, the, that's an equivalent to a, what's called a rose engine. The straight line goes up and down, the rose engine goes around. And those things were used by Mr. Fabergé to do the, his the eggs? Uh, guilloche on his eggs and oh. his other things. So the, the, the kinds of equipment that I use are actually um, virtually identical to the things that were used back in his, in his uh, era, you know, several hundred years ago, a couple hundred years ago. So it's not done by hand by a chisel and a hammer, but it is done semi by hand because the machines are hand cranked. There are no motors. There's no programming. There's nothing like that. It's a hand crank machine that makes the thing, the pen barrel go up and down. And I apply hand pressure to the engraving cutter. And the engraving cutter sort of follows a, a, a predestined pattern that's in, on the side of the machine. So I get a, a line that's kind of wiggly, and then I kind of shift that line and make another one next to it, and then shift it and make another one next to it. Yeah. <clears throat> and shifting pattern gives you this uh, this repetitive, very precise, um, you know, engraving around the barrel. And if the lines are close enough, you can get a really nice uh, shimmer out of it, and then sometimes some nice moiré patterns. What what pen am I looking at right now? <laughs> what pattern is this? Well, I call it the double saw. That's just my name for it. And you can actually see what the what the pattern looks like in a little more detail on the clip. The the the, uh, the lines on the clip are, are the same lines that are on the barrel. I would never have guessed that. Right. So they're 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 shifted a little bit differently, but it's the same the same lines. I've seen video of you working one of these machines. Right. Yeah. Um, is that still at your website? It's not on the website. Well, let's see. There may be a link to it. I know it's on YouTube. But if you just go to the the Argent Blue channel. Okay. And, uh, Argent, Argent Blue Channel on YouTube, and we can find. Yeah, I, I I recall that they they show close up how these machines are working, and and that you are doing them by hand. Right, I'm cranking on the side. That's kind of out of the picture, but you can see the engraving cutter 
you know, going back and forth, and you can see the, the you know, the, the silver chip unwinding as the cutter gets into the metal. And, now, when, uh, you, when you go to make a pen, do you start with a, a five kilo ingot of, of silver, or how does this work? No, I have somebody make custom tubes for me. Okay. So when I design a pen, I'll say, okay, this is what I want, and then I'll go uh, to find the tube I need to, to make that happen, and there's, a, there's an outfit that will make the tube for me. So I, I, I pay them money, and they make tube, and uh, so I get what I want. Now, I have to either machine the tube or deform it a little bit to, to make all the details that I want, but I start from some custom tube. And it's pretty, it's pretty thick wall too. That's why my pens are a little bit on the heavy side for their size. They're about 85 grams. That's three ounces. And we did our homework on that, didn't we, Eric? We did. We did. <laughs> so, so anyway, and, I, get, I get the tube from the uh, the tube guy, <laughs> and uh, I cut it to uh, to length and, and do whatever I need to do, make the internal parts, and uh, the nib comes from uh, Peter Bach. Okay. It's a thick size nib. It's got my own custom uh, stamping on there that I, I designed. And it's 18 karat gold with the uh, you know, rhodium, rhodium plated highlights, two tone nib. So you get, the, you get the, the nibs from Bach and you get the tubing custom made. And then you, you do what you need to do to the tubing to get it in the shape of a pen. And then you put your engraving on it. Uh, right. And the only thing that's left out of that whole process is how to make the clip. The clip is made out of sheet, this plain old flat silver sheet. And, uh, you know, cut out the pattern and, and bend it and uh, engrave it and do the finishing and and put it on there. So they heat treat it so it's springy. And, right. And, and clips are problematic. Most people wouldn't even think about a clip. But if you're trying to build a pen from scratch and put a clip on it, I'm glad you solved that problem. <laughs> The, yeah, clips clips are a big deal. I, I've uh, a number of people have asked me, you know, can you help me make a clip? And I, I've, you know, explained what it is that I do, and uh, it's actually helped a few people out to uh, to make their own. But that's almost the hardest thing to do on the pen, at least from my, uh, my perspective. I'm going to quote you on that because I've always thought it was, but uh, now that I've heard it from you, I'm going to I'm going to repeat it often. Yeah, it's the most complex part. It's got bends in it. It's not round. It's got you know other things you got to do to it to make it work, and so it's just a harder thing to do. <laughs> now you you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I'm guessing you're, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm guessing it it takes a little more than five minutes to make one of your pens. Yes, I told you you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I get that I get that question all the time. How long does it take to make a pen? And the the short answer is, uh, if I had everything all lined up to assemble the pen, you know, make things and assemble the pen, it would, it would probably take about three days. And that includes, you know, making each individual part from a, a you know, canned recipe, you know, the recipe being, you know, the drawing, you know, the, the engineering drawing that I used to, to define what parts look like. Um, it includes the engraving process, it includes time for various uh, glues to dry and, and other kinds of things that, that I need to do, making the clip. I've kind of added all this up one time, and there are just an, an enormous number of steps, especially with the clip, uh, to, to do this kind of thing. The, the, uh, the longer answer is that I tend to make a lot of the internal parts in a large number so that I'll have them on hand whenever I want to assemble a pen. So I don't make the pen from from scratch, start to finish, I make all kinds of pieces, set them aside, and then later on I'll assemble some things, plus uh, do some new things on the barrel, for example, a new pattern, or some new inlays, or you know, some, something like that. Some of the pens I make, like the recent ones that have the, uh, the really precise mother pearl inlays, take me months to make. Months. Because there, there's, there's what's called, you know, in my, in my world, in the aerospace world, you know, non-recurring engineering, which means design time, sitting at a computer and kind of dream things up, making drawings on paper and making experiments and, and failing and then trying it again. And there we, there we go. There's, there's, there's the, um, the, the, let's see, that's, that's about the second one I did with inlays. So this um, is Mother Pearl Inlay, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of this pen. This one's called the Slipstream Geometric. Okay, so it's a Slipstream it's Geometric. A 
right? And there are inlays on the, the barrel, there are inlays on the cap, and there are inlays on the clip. And those those inlays were made uh, with um, a special piece of equipment called uh, an EDM machine. It's called the electrical discharge machining. And that allows me to make uh, any shaped hole I want. And, and, and what's neat about that machine is I can make holes with sharp inside corners like the squares. Right. Sharp inside corners. That's really hard to do with a milling machine because milling cutters tend to be round. <laughs> So anyway, that, that's just a detail in, in making these kinds of pens. But uh, in order to get that design done, uh, there was a lot of experimentation to uh, to actually get the holes, you know, done correctly. And then uh, I did. A, there was a failure on one of the clips I made, so I had to do it again. And all the time it takes to cut out the pearl to match the holes and then glue them in there and do all the finishing can take an enormous amount of time. So this is another inlay. All all the slipstreams have an inlay on the top and the bottom. Um, these these are pearl. Um, this inlay on the um, on the barrel is actually done with a milling machine and not an EDM, and it's it's very thick pearl, which is uh, kind of hard to get. So uh, and it's white mother pearl. So it's just kind of laid in there. And then those, those pieces of pearl on the barrel that I'm looking at are are one piece. Yes, each one is one piece, and yes. yeah. pearl curves like that, curves around the the barrel, or do you have to heat heat it up and bend it? <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you know, uh, you can't bend pearl. Uh, so I didn't think so, but, but this, looks, <laughs> this looks like it's pretty much curved with the pen. Well, it, that, that's the whole intent, and that's the reason why I had to get some very thick mother pearl to get that effect, because it goes quite a ways around the, uh, you know, about a third of the way around the uh, the uh, circumference of the barrel. So so I lay a piece, of, a very thick piece of, uh, you know, rectangular piece of pearl in that slot, and then just finish off all the stuff that, that sticks out. Gotcha, gotcha. So I end up with a nice... Uh, a nice finished uh, inlay there. You really, when you run your, run your finger across that, you really can't tell there's anything there. As it should be. Right, right. I'll be able to tell. One thing we haven't mentioned yet that I'd like to ask about is how do you make your sections? Uh, they're just turned on a lathe. Oh, do you mean the pattern on the sections? Well, any kind of section. Um, uh, you you start with a tube and turn it on a lathe. No, so that's that's uh, that's solid. Uh, okay, solid this one you'll do solid. Yeah, because the uh, you know the hole down the middle is is fairly relatively small compared to barrels and caps, so it really doesn't uh, doesn't pay to have any kind of a, a tube made. It's, it would be an enormously thick walled tube, so it's easy just to drill it out. But the the sections I make are uh, and again those are nickel silver. Uh, and there's a part that you can't see that screws into the uh, into the barrel. That's nickel silver as well. And it's uh, the way I make them is two parts. I make the, the part you hold, and I make the part that's hidden, and they press fit together. Okay. Uh, into one piece. And then um, I know your question is going to be, okay, okay, how do you do those patterns? On how them? do you do these patterns? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you'd ever ask. Um, those are done with a laser, uh, so that's laser engraving. It's... Uh, the pattern is actually very shallow. There is a tiny bit of texture you can feel, uh, but the um, it's 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 just done with a you know a, a ten watt. Actually, those are done with a one watt laser. I, uh, for the for the nerds out there, it's a you know, ten sixty four nanometer uh, gag laser. And uh, the color comes from just you know, when the laser burns away the metal, it's actually burning away the little tiny spots, and that's just the color it leaves. And uh, with uh, with wear, that'll turn darker. Uh, oh. that's, that's just right out of the right out of the box. That kind of a coppery color. Cool. Nice. Yeah. And kind of attractive. Yeah. When you go to a pen show, for instance, when you go to the Denver pen show, I assume you bring some of these pens with you. Oh yeah, I'll bring all the uh, slipstream I have, plus some more stuff. Since it's local, I can kind of unload the entire kitchen sink on my table at the pen show. Yeah, well, I, I hope you do that, but. Sticking on the subject of pens, you're moving into a new material now. I am. I've heard a rumor anyway. You can, you can. I think, I, told, I, I, think I gave you the rumor, and now you're. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you haven't done one of these shows before, have you? Well, yeah, your your uh, your prep was good there. Uh, I'm 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 going into titanium, and it's going to be a slipstream shape, um, which is this. The lighting is horrible, but anyway, it's the uh, the barrel is is titanium. It's uh, for the nerd out there. It's CP2 titanium. And the uh, the section is going to be another another nickel silver variety, um, and I'm going to keep the cost down on this one so more people can afford them. <laughs> okay. The uh, are kind of the, these are not ready yet. Uh, no, no, they're not. I'm just, this is the prototyping I'm doing for using this this metal. There's some uh, a process that I'm using which I think is fairly unusual. Uh, just to make the tail end of this thing, I'm actually what the, I'm I'm deep drawing this this end and what that means is I'm, I'm drawing is kind of a generic term i'm pressing this tube into a die to squash it down so that i don't have to machine it right gotcha and, and it's it's a lot quicker to do that uh and i wasn't sure i was going to be able to do that with titanium titanium is an enormously strong lightweight material and it's it very like hard, it's hard to work with in some cases so anyway it works so, does that that prototype is the only one in existence Yes, right now it's a, I'm not anywhere near finished. I'm going to put some decoration on the on the barrel, and I have to make the cap and the clip now. So I'll be making the clip out of titanium as well. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. We'll see how it goes. Will, will, will you have the titanium prototype in whatever uh, condition it's in uh, yeah. at the Denver Pen Show, uh, yeah. Colorado Pen Show? I will bring that. I will bring it. I will bring at least what you see. I may have I may have put a an inlay in the tail end, and I may have uh, done some. Some decoration on the side. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Do you have uh, an yeah. estimate of what the pen will weigh when finished? Uh, less. Less. Okay. Less than <laughs> less than three ounces. Less than. Five. <laughs> it'll, it'll probably be on the order of uh, half the weight. Half the other one. I mean, it's, the section is going to be a little heavier than the rest of it. I mean, the, the balance is going to be a little different because there's more metal up here in the section. Right, it'll, be but it'll probably be about an ounce and a half, so that'll be about forty grams. Forty-two grams. Well, I've been at your your table at pen shows, L.A. and uh, Columbus, I remember, uh, and you can spend a long time at your table just studying all the different patterns on your pens, and wishing you could buy one. Um, <laughs> well, I would encourage anyone who's going to be anywhere near Denver next month to go see your pens at the pen show. Because other than that, you got to look at pictures and, and pictures are wonderful, but boy, you hold your pens in your hand. It just makes me want to give you my credit card. So I'm going to stay away from Denver this year. <laughs> well, I would urge you to come so I can use your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to add that I forgot to bring up? Well, not really. I mean, uh, there, as far as the history that I've had, I started out with a what was with what was the metal rug thing. I don't know if you remember that, but that was a that was a uh, an, an endeavor with a, a partner of mine and with with Conway Stewart. And I remember seeing Conway Stewart nibs on your pens. They or, were they perhaps. were they were actually dual branded pens, which right. I think is a is, is a first in in the industry. So we. We had a, you know, my partner and I had an agreement with them that they would provide some of the basic stock. You know, in other words, the barrels and the cap, blank barrels and caps. And uh, I did the rest of the fabrication. I, I made the little tail end and the top end, and I made the clips, which looked like slipstream clips. And uh, we uh, engraved on the cap the MW for metal right, but yet the nib had Conway Stewart. And it was essentially uh, guaranteed by both companies. And um, Conway Stewart did not sell them, but we did. The, you know, Metal Right, my partner and I did. So that that company has kind of gone gone by the wayside as I kind of kind of merged into the into the slipstream stuff by myself. So uh, so these things, the Metal Right things, with the RR series, and you know, here's one. They, they just they look very similar. They're on a the website as well. They look very similar, except they have Damascus steel tops and bottoms called Stoppers in the UK. And uh, they're a heavier pen, they're a bigger pen, uh, but they they got got me started in uh, producing this gear shape pattern for the uh, for the masses. <laughs> for the masses. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Portland? Yeah, uh, you're not going to be at the Dallas show. I uh, I can't get down there. No. Okay. Yeah. Then I guess I can go there and and be safe from your pins. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can buy online, or you can give me a call. Or I'll take your card right. I'll take your card right here online <laughs> on the air. We should mention that your website is argentblue.com. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, yeah. and the current the current stuff is in the slipstream. Or I'm on the left. Good, because that's where I went to pull the photos that I got. Yeah. So I wish you a lot of luck in. In Denver at the Colorado Pen Show, uh, sell all those pens, and I'll okay. catch up with you next time. One other thing I forgot to mention: I got the Pen World Metal Mastery Award this year. That's one of my favorite now. now, Pen World is very nice to you. Yes, and there's no there's no reason they shouldn't be because your pens are wonderful. <laughs> but I didn't know that you got the award, so yeah. fill me in on that. Well, there, there's a, the Reader's Choice Award. You know, they got about I don't know thirteen thousand. Yeah, I don't know different categories of things and. And uh, there were five pens, as in most categories, nominated for each category. So I got nominated this year for Best Metal, metal Mastery, uh, and um, I got the award. I was going to pick it up in D.C., but I couldn't get there, so I guess they're going to mail it to me. But anyway, that's that's another highlight. In the, uh, well, they're going to be at the Colorado Pen Show. They can bring it to you there. Um, I'm not sure who's coming. Are they going to that? John's going to be there. John Chandler? Okay, good. So, so make some phone calls and make sure John has your award. I, oh, now, I already, yeah, I talked to Susan. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I get it. Yeah. <laughs> was there an article about your pens? What's the most, what's the most recent article in Pen World? Do we know the issue? I think the uh, most recent full article was back in the Metal Right days. There hasn't been an article about Argent Blue, but okay. I had uh, pens, uh, you know, in the front section, in the mouth section, whenever I come up with a new design, I'll send a photo off to uh, Susan Laura, and uh, they'll, they'll publish that. And I put I put ads in there too. I see. And, uh, each each design I come up with. Uh, the latest one is the one called the Chicane, which is a mother pearl inlay. I don't know if you got a picture of that. I didn't thing. grab a picture because I wanted to talk about slipstream, but I I, I didn't see it. It is a slipstream. Yeah. I, well, how many different slipstreams yeah. are there? Because I, I pulled them out a million photos. <laughs> well, a slipstream is the shape. So every time I come up with a different um, design, uh, say an engraving design or, or an inlay design, I'll give the slipstream a name. So like the double saw, like the basket weave, like the, uh, um, the uh, geometric. There's another okay. one called the wave, and then the latest one is called the chicane. So we're going to have to do this interview again. We'll just start off. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to find out where you have been mentioned in pen rolls. Because I have somewhere in this pen shop, I've got every issue ever printed, I'm sure. So I'm going to hunt you down. As far as I know, there's no index, so it'll take me a little while. But I'll be okay with that. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. And uh, you missed your pen posse meeting today. So you might as well say hello to everybody at the pen posse. Hello, everybody in the pen posse. Okay. Now they might they <laughs> might think about forgiving you for having missed the meeting, <laughs> and I'll catch up with you the next time I catch up with you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Eric. My pleasure. Talk to you later. Bye bye.